Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Read Up UK, CC Trainer Ling, here to bring you another retro review from past seasons of The Loud House. In today's video, we look at that one episode from season three where Luann has a love interest she wants to seek, but to seal their love with a thespian kiss makes her feel very, very weak. Today's episode is titled Stage Plight. First, we'll discuss the plot and then my thoughts and critiques with my final score. So, let's get right into it. The episode begins with Luann auditioning for her school's production of Romeo and Juliet as a way of spending time with her crush, Benny. But when the two of them are cast for the leading roles, a more apprehensive Luann tries to avoid kissing Benny, something the script calls for, and this eventually leads to Benny quitting the play. They both admit they were nervous about what they had to do in the play, and after they confess their feelings for each other, they finally kiss for real and go on to perform as Romeo and Juliet. Well, that concludes the plot of the episode, so now we come to my thoughts and critiques. Even though this isn't my favorite Luann episode, of the entire series, it comes pretty close to being the best just in terms of an episode where she's the only loud sibling starring in the lead. This episode gives more development to her character beyond the usual joke-telling and prank-happy girl she's mostly been presented as since the series first began. Going back as early as Ellis for Love in Season 2, she has an interest in theater and we later find out she's part of her school's drama club. It adds another layer to her personality and it makes her one of the most diverse characters on the show when it comes to what she likes. Speaking of what she she likes, she mentions how she really likes her classmate Benny, who was last seen in Ellis for Love as her crush. He's a really good character in this episode, and truthfully, he's one of the most genuine and nicest guys on the show. He's voiced by Sean Gianbrone, and from how people view this actor as such a quirky and lovable guy with whom everybody wants to be friends, it's almost like he's voicing an animated version of himself. That's pretty cool. Now, according to the official Wikia page, it says Benny was afraid to kiss Luann for the same reason why she was afraid to kiss him. As as sensible and logical as that explanation is, I kinda don't buy it. I mean, his conversation with Luann does suggest that could be the reason, but the way he was ready to kiss her during rehearsals and how he was bummed out when Luann suggested sending Romeo a text seems to indicate he was anything but nervous. Maybe I'm looking at it all wrong, and perhaps I am wrong about my theory. But you have to admit, Benny would have looked more relieved whenever Luann tried to avoid the inevitable kiss. Building off that, I started thinking how these two weren't already aware of the feelings they had had for one another if Luann was last seen trying to lure Benny with a love letter. I guess she was still too nervous to say how she truly felt and tore up that letter before he could read it. That's pretty much how this entire episode played out, having a character avoid having to confess their love for someone no matter how much they want to. She never kissed anyone before and was totally nervous about looking stupid doing it in front of the boy she loved, with the added pressure of knowing she'd have to do it for the first time in front of other people. So, yeah, I can see why Luann started falling apart emotionally the second her initial plan to be with Benny in the play backfired. Rather than being part of the same family where she wouldn't have to kiss anyone, she wound up in a situation where she and Benny were in opposing families and would have to kiss him according to the script. You can't help but sympathize with Luann when this happened because she hadn't planned on that big of a casting change. She felt she wasn't ready for this monumental moment as a teenager, and I can see why she wanted to get out of doing what was in the script. However, one of her ways to get out of rehearsing with Benny was just well, stupidly contrived. She throws a banana peel on stage, and not only does no one in the audience say anything, but Benny and Mrs. Bernardo just conveniently look away from what was thrown and who's coming towards them. I don't know, but something about that sequence just didn't look natural. There's also the unnatural ending of how Mr. Coconuts and Mrs. Apple Blossom, Benny's personal marionette, just somehow came to life. So much so that Lola was wondering who was quoting that one line from the movie Casablanca. It's one of those things the show never tells touches upon, and I think it's high time they did. Besides those two questionable moments, the real selling point to the episode was the official beginning of Luann and Benny's relationship. I really liked the time they shared together on screen, and you could tell these two were an instant match made in heaven. Now, unlike Luna and Sam's relationship debut, where they initially didn't have all that much in common, these two were able to hit it off right away, since they had a lot in common. They both love theater, mimes, puns, and they use their puppets to express those thoughts and feelings they're too afraid to say themselves. I found it interesting how Luann quickly dropped her Mr. Coconut's voice the moment she found out Benny really likes her the same way she likes him. It was like the burden of hiding behind their puppets was lifted off their shoulders, and that's where they started to feel more comfortable with each other. It's hard to deny that after everything they went through emotionally, it was still very obvious by the end that they had great organic chemistry. They were able to share their first kiss in private, and they no longer felt embarrassed when the time came to do it on stage. It was a good moment of growth for the both of them, as if they were meant to be 
be the stars of the play the whole time, and they just didn't know it until they were put in that position. Mrs. Bernardo could see they were a better fit for the lead of Romeo and Juliet. Sorry, Ruby and Spencer. And with that in mind, we come to my last positive, and it would be this eccentric drama teacher. This is her second appearance in the series, but this is her first appearance as a newly redesigned character following her debut in Jeers for Fears. I don't know what could have prompted a sudden change to how she originally looked, but I can't complain about that in the long run. You can tell Greg Griffin goes all in on bringing out the spontaneousness and melodrama of her character. She's like an animated version of Psychowitz from Victorious. I don't know if anyone else thought the same thing. Although I do wonder if she was inspired by the 1996 version of Romeo and Juliet to allow these two iconic Shakespearean characters to text their love to each other, at least you can't say she's a stickler for actors having to follow all the rules all the time. The world needs more Mrs. Bernardos. She'd make for an awesome teacher in real life. Overall, even if this episode had the stereotypical plot of a character who has a crush on someone and they're too scared to show how they really feel, I can say this episode came off as very authentic and very relatable. We were all Luann at some point as teenagers, and that first kiss can be very nerve-wracking. Even if it's with someone you really like, having to do it so publicly in front of an audience would make anyone scared. And Luann not wanting to look like a bad kisser in front of her school, and more specifically Benny, was a good enough reason to get out of doing it, at least from her perspective. The story showed a more emotional side to her usual comedy-driven personality, and she was given more development as a result. Benny was also given a more defined character following his debut in Season 2, and he and Luann made for some great on-screen chemistry. Besides my nitpicks on how Luann's banana peel scene played out, and how I still can't wrap my mind around how and why two puppets can come to life, this was, and still is, one of the best episodes to close out the third season, at least according to how the episodes originally aired on TV. Throw in some exaggerated acting from Mrs. Bernardo, and you get one heck of an episode. With that said, I give Stage Plight a 9.8 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of Stage Plight. This episode always leaves me wondering how out of every newly made couple featured in Ellis for Love, only two of them have gotten the time and attention they deserve, while all the others just, you know, never went anywhere. We may never find out, but for what it's worth, Luann and Benny is a strong ship nonetheless, and may it sail for a long time. So, as far as this episode goes, what did you guys think of it? Love it? Hate it? Something you would add? Change? Keep it as it is? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe to this channel for the latest Loud House content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team Read Up UK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.